Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's Down and Dirty, we're gonna go over excavator basics. And when I mean basics, we're not even gonna get into running the machine today on today's video because it's gonna get too lengthy if I try to do it all. So today we're doing an outside the cab and inside the cab tour of the machine. Uh, we will do a separate video for running the machine just because this is, excavators are, are way more involved than dozers and it would be really difficult to do a tips and tricks and keep the tour together. I think it would get way too lengthy so stay posted for the actual operating video. But today we're gonna go for basic, never been in an excavator, new operator, what do you do to start your day? So the first thing we're gonna do when we walk up to this machine, uh, before we're ready to do anything for the day is we need to grease this machine. And I'm not gonna go through every individual grease point, but excavators for the most part, all have the same grease points. So you're gonna have two bucket pins, which this machine has a coupler, and I'll show you that real quick. This has a quick coupler on it. So these two pins here don't actually receive grease. The, this is a what's called a pin grabbing coupler. So this coupler, which is this piece right here, this coupler grabs onto these pins. And so they don't need grease because they aren't physically moving. Now there is a piece in the coupler that needs grease. You'll see right up in here, and I think there's another one further down in there. The, the components of the actual coupler will need grease. But when you have a coupler on a machine and it's a pin grabber style, you don't need to grease these two. But you will have these pins that you need to grease. And you can see there's some grease points back here. There's gonna be grease points up on that front pin as well. Then you're gonna have grease points on the linkage up here. Moving up, your stick cylinder, I'm sorry, your, your bucket cylinder where it attaches to the stick is gonna have a grease point up there. And you'll just curl the boom all the way in and your bucket all the way in and lower it to the ground and you'll be able to reach that grease point up there. Moving away from the machine so that we can actually see what we're doing here, you'll also, while you have the machine in the curled position, you're gonna have grease points up there where the boom and stick meet. You're gonna have your stick cylinder that you'll grease. This point back here, it's important to note, you're not gonna grease from the ground. That's actually on a grease block that's up on the machine that I'll show you in a second here. But you do have grease points up in that area. And then one of the most critical things you do need to grease is this guy right here. That is your swing bearing. That's this whole turntable right here that you're greasing with these, this point. That is one of the most expensive components on an excavator that you can replace. And that, the only reason you'll need to replace that component outside of just the, the machine being ancient, the only reason you'll ever need to replace that is if you don't grease it. It's a stupid, simple thing to do, and it can save, the, I bet that swing bearing is easily $30,000 on this machine. You're talking a substantial amount of money if you don't grease that, so make sure you grease the turntable. You've also got your uh, boom cylinders here that will take grease, and that's pretty much it for on the ground stuff. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move up onto the machine. And right here on the side of the boom is the grease block I was telling you about. You're gonna have multiple grease points here. This is going to grease parts of the boom itself, this long pin that runs down here. It's gonna grease part of that. It's gonna run up and grease your boom cylinders at the top. And you're also gonna have a grease point that goes up to our stick cylinder that's up at the top there that we won't be able to reach from the ground. So that about sums up greasing the machine and that needs to be daily. Uh, there are points on here that you don't have to grease quite as frequently. A lot of machines, all machines really, have hour charts that tell you when you should grease. Here are my thoughts on that. As you get to know your machine, and this isn't just excavators, this is any machine you run. As you get to know your machine, you're gonna know when certain points need grease. For instance, I know for a fact that those bucket pins out there is a daily grease point. I know that my stick and boom joint is gonna be a daily grease point. My swing bearing, it's gonna be pretty much a daily grease point because they're constantly rotating, they're constantly wearing, you need to grease those well. Now, when you start getting into some of the smaller movements like your stick cylinder up top or your boom cylinders here, they don't get quite as much rotation. If you think about how much as that stick cylinder just moves just a little bit because you're sticking in and out, there's not a whole lot of wear there. There's not a whole lot of grease getting forced out. So you can skimp on those. You can go two or three days before you need to grease them. So just take time to learn your machine. In the beginning, when in doubt, I will say this every time, when in doubt, grease. It's always safe to put grease on something. It's not safe to let it go until it starts squeaking because that's when you're wearing it, you cause problems. 
and then you get into a whole mess of problems. So all that to say, first thing for the day, grease the machine. Second thing we need to do is start looking at our fluid checks. So this is a, a fluid check that I'm gonna show you that's not necessarily a daily fluid check, but you do need to look. Uh, this is your swing motor. This is the, the, the motor that is physically turning the machine and it does have fluid with a dipstick. And you'll just pull that out and you'll check your fluid and make sure it's on the dipstick and it's at a good level. The next thing you're gonna do is move back here and we're gonna do our typical checks like we do on any other machine. Maybe if I can get this off of here one-handed. There we go. And I'm not physically checking all of these today because I did this morning. I've actually been running and this is all hot. But here's the engine. You've got your oil check right here. Our coolant is actually gonna be down at the bottom, but this is where you're gonna pull your oil dipstick and you're just gonna kind of give the engine a general look, make sure there's nothing, you know, really sticking out that needs to, uh, that needs to be addressed before you start for the day. I'm not gonna fool with shutting that right now because it's gonna take two hands and I'm not gonna mess with it. So once we've checked our fluids up here, we're gonna go down to ground level. Uh, three points of contact, right? Safety first. Uh, some other things you're gonna wanna know. So let's finish out our fluid checks really quick. Uh, we're gonna go over here to what would be the passenger side, I guess you could call it, of the machine. In this compartment right here, this has all of our hydraulics. So you can see this mama right here is the main hydraulic feed line going into your hydraulic pump. That's why that sucker's so huge. Uh, this is coming from your hydraulic reservoir, which is right in inside this compartment. You can see it tucked right in there. And I'm gonna apologize, because this might be a little difficult for you guys to see. When we go to check hydraulic uh, levels, if you think about really what hydraulic oil is doing, it's being fed out into all of our cylinders to push them out or pull them in. Well, in order to check our fluid, we need to have kind of a set point of the machine being set up so that we know where the level is correct, whether it's all the cylinders are, are pulled in or they're all pushed out. We need to have a checkpoint where we know the fluid level is correct. Manufacturers provide you with that, and this is really important. Instead of just glancing at your hydraulic sight glass, you need to pay attention to this part right here, and it's this sticker. You can see it right back in there. I'm hoping, let me tap my screen. Yep, so you can see it. So this machine, in order to check the sight glass, which is tucked right back in here. Let me see if I can get you. There you go, you can see it. In order to check that sight glass and have it accurate, this machine needs to be sitting like I have it parked right now, which is with the boom and stick, with the stick sitting at 90 degrees and the bucket not curled in, sitting flat on the ground. That is how you check on this machine where the hydraulic oil's at. Every machine's gonna be different. Every manufacturer is gonna be different. Some of them you have to pull the boom and the stick and the bucket all the way in, curl everything in, and that's how you check it. Just make sure you're aware that each machine's different so you can go check it in the 90 degree position on, call it a case or a Hitachi, and you may be actually low on oil and you think you're fine, and it's because you didn't have the machine positioned correctly. So really important, pay attention to that. While we're in this compartment, you do have filters. Uh, so you've got your engine oil filter here. Yes, it's massive. This is a 330, it's a good size motor. You've got hydraulic oil filters here. And that's really all you're gonna need to pay attention to in this compartment. So we're gonna go ahead and close that up. And we're gonna go around to the other side because there's some important things. So now that we've done our fluid checks and we know that we're ready to run, there's a couple other things I wanna show you on the ground before you go to fire this machine up. So here on the, call it driver side of the machine, you've got your back most compartment that you're gonna have to open first before you open this compartment here. And we have things we wanna pay attention to in both. So in the first compartment back here, obviously we have our air filter for our engine. That's an important piece. Tucked down behind here is our batteries. We've got fuses here, and then we have our master right here. So our master disconnect, you need to make sure that's on, otherwise the machine's not gonna fire up for you. 
Uh, on this particular machine, don't get too hung up on location of filters just because they do vary depending on the machine. But on this particular machine, we do have our fuel filter and our fuel oil separator, I'm sorry, fuel water separator uh, right here, along with our primer. We have our coolant check right here. We have our washer fluid. But really what I wanna tell you guys about is this little guy down here. And there's a reason I wanted to show you that because that is a nondescript. That right there is your pattern changer. This moves, so what you do is back out this nut right here and then this will flip over, and that is how you change your pattern on an excavator. On almost every single large excavator, so call it, call it your, I don't know, probably your eight ton machine and up, almost every excavator on the large size, that switcher is going to be located right behind the cab there. If it's not a switch in the cab, like some of the newer models, it's going to be directly behind the cab and it's gonna be some nondescript valve like that. So that's what you're gonna be looking for if you need to change the pattern on your excavator. If you don't know what pattern changers are, what different patterns are, we're gonna get into that here in just a second when I meet you in the cab. So that is most everything you need to know to fire up an excavator. That's all your morning checks, that's your greasing that you've gotta do. Um, so that's what you're gonna check for. The only other thing I'm gonna tell you while we're outside the machine, you can see my tracks are pretty packed here because we've been working today, that's okay. If you live in the north and you know you're gonna get a freeze overnight, a hard freeze, make sure you clean your tracks at the end of the day and make sure you park this excavator on some grass or on some boards uh, it doesn't need don't leave this sucker right in the dirt because what's going to happen is you're going to come up the next morning and that machine is going to be frozen solid and you cannot get the tracks to move you're going to spend at least half a day with a torpedo heater running and shoveling those tracks out because they're going to be froze rock solid and the machine will physically be frozen to the ground so Trust me, as a Texas boy that moved to Michigan and learned this lesson the hard way, trust me when I tell you it is worth your time to spend 20, 30 minutes cleaning your tracks at the end of the day and parking that sucker on the grass if you know you're gonna get a hard freeze that night. I had to learn it the hard way. So that being said, give me just a minute. I'll meet you in the cab. We're gonna go over the controls and kind of just do a quick in-cab tour and we'll wrap this video up. So we'll see you here in a second. All right guys, welcome inside the cab. We're just gonna do a really quick cab tour. We'll fire the machine up and I'll show you the basics of the controls in an excavator. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is just kind of looking around the cab. We have our monitor here. That's gonna show us all of our engine parameters. It's gonna show us our hydraulic temperature, stuff like that, hours on the machine. Uh, if you do have to check the hours on the machine, down here by your leg, we've got an actual hour meter, an analog hour meter. Uh, that's not always there. Sometimes it's under the seat, sometimes it's over by the door. Just look around the cab if you need to find that. If all else fails, it may not have an analog hour meter. A lot of the new machines don't have one. Uh, so you just have to turn the key to the on position and check it on the computer. I don't necessarily like that in case the computer screen goes off or you have battery issues or whatever, but whatever it is, what it is. Uh, moving over here to the right. This is to cancel your backup alarm. So it is a safety feature on all these excavators. You're never gonna be able to totally turn off the backup alarm. At least I haven't found on any of the machines. What you can do is temporary silence it. So when you start catting, instead of having it going forever, you can hit that button. And while you are continuing to cat, it will turn off. As soon as you stop and then start tracking again, the backup alarm is going to turn on again and you have to hit that button again. So that's what that button does. Uh, this is going to be your automatic engine deceleration. So if I stop messing with the controls after about four, I don't know, three or four seconds, the engine will idle down by itself. And then when I touch the controls, it's going to take back off again. Um, that turns that feature on and off. Uh, this is your track speed, whether you're in rabbit or turtle mode. We have wipers right here and we've got our lights. Uh, moving over here, we've got our climate controls, and then further back here, we've got our radio. Uh, back over here, we actually have, I believe this is going to be the button for the quick disconnect for the coupler. I'm not 100% sure on this machine. And then you've got a couple other wiper switches here. So that's what all these buttons do. Right here is our throttle, 
and our ignition. So when we go to fire up, one of the things that you're gonna notice that I didn't show you when we got in the cab here, it's always on the door side of the cab is your safety lockout. And that is this bar right here. It's not, it's not your controller, it's beside you. That has to be down in that position in order to run this machine. However, for a safety reason, it will not start unless it's in the up position. Because, and the whole idea is, you don't wanna be accidentally leaning on this, fire up the machine, and have the machine start running all over on you when you're not prepared for it. So that is the, why the lockout has to be in the up position to start. So we've got it in the up position. We're gonna fire up. You can see our screen turning on here through all the dust. And this machine did just uh, go through a bunch of checks and tell us all our fuel fluids were low, but then it's fine. That's just part of this machine firing up. By the way, this does have uh, a keypad for getting into the menus. That's tucked away. Uh, the new machines, don't get too hung up on that. The C-Series is an older series. The new machines, that's almost always a touch screen or the keypad's very visible, so don't get too hung up on that. But now that we're fired up, if we wanna actually run this machine, now we have to take our safety bar and put it in the down position. And now all of our hydraulics are live. And so we're going to do a quick tour of the functions. I'm sorry, I should point this at my face. I'm really getting bad about that. Now we're gonna do a quick tour of the functions of this machine. So you have two different patterns in excavators. I'm gonna show you the more common pattern I'm gonna call it for excavators, and then I'll show you what it would be if it was flipped. So, and I've shown this in a, in a couple other videos on my channel if you've seen those, but we're gonna go through all of the controls. So over on our right side, we have our boom and our bucket functions. So if I lift back on this, that's going to pull my boom up off the ground. If I push that forward, we're gonna slam that sucker right down on the ground, just like we did. So let's get it back up in the air. Now if I move this and pull it towards me, to the left, towards me, that's gonna curl the bucket. And the way I always remember this on all machines is, and by the way, if I push it away from me, it uncurls the bucket. And the way I always remember that personally is, I wanna pull it towards me if I want the bucket to curl towards me. I wanna push that handle away from me if I want the bucket to move away from me. So we've got boom and bucket here. If we go to this side, this is gonna be our swing to the right and to the left. And then we've got stick in and stick out. And that's just stick in and stick out. The only other thing you've got in this particular machine is you've got your travel pedals. And uh, this is very straightforward. The left one operates your left track, the right one operates your right track. And, and that's in the forward position. And the way you know you're in a forward position in an excavator is right here. If you look, that is our front idler. I'm sorry, I can't talk. That is our front idler. That's not a final drive. Let's spin around so you can see what a final drive looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and throttle this machine up so we got some juice. So I'm gonna take this, and when you're running an excavator, that's all the way. I mean, it's really not worth fooling around unless you're doing some really, really delicate piece work that you really need to dial it down. You can go to, you know, partial throttle, but really everything's done here, and you want full power. So we're gonna go ahead and spin the machine so I can show you what a final drive looks like from the back. So that is our final drive. That's actually what's gonna drive the track around on the undercarriage. This is the rear of the machine. So you can spin 360 in an excavator, but the undercarriage still has a front and a rear. And so when we're in this position, now our travel pedals are opposite of what they would be because we're backwards. So if I, push on this travel pedal, it's gonna move that track. 
and it's because we're backwards. So that's the quick way to orient yourself without looking like an idiot on the job site is before you go to travel, if you're not sure which way you're facing, just peek out your window. That's my idler. Okay, we're going forward. So back to our travel pedals. You've got forward, and if you go backwards, you go backwards. In order to turn, if we want to turn off to the right, we're going to go forward with our left track and leave our right track stationary. Or if you really want to turn sharp, you can go forward with your left track and backwards with your right track, and that's going to turn you a lot sharper. So those are the basic controls of an excavator. And like I said, I'm not going to get into tips and tricks on this particular video. I am going to tell you one crucial piece of advice. It's the, it's the biggest piece of advice I can give you in an excavator, especially because most of the time when you're in an excavator, you're working around other people. If you need to do anything, you can see I've got my stuff behind me in the cab here. If I need to turn around and get into that stuff, before you do anything, whether you take off your coat, you take off another piece of clothing, you mess with your lunch, whatever it is, please, please, please get in the habit of taking that safety bar and just doing that with it. Because it is so easy, and it happens every year, guys in the hole lose their life over it. It's so easy to start taking off your coat and you just hit that really quick or you accidentally brush that guy. And guess what? You just killed the guy in the hole. It happens that quick, it happens that easy. So please guys, get in the habit of anytime, anytime you are not running the machine and not actively digging. I you know, personally, I actually take it a step further. And if I'm not digging and I know someone's gonna be up against the machine, I will actually pull that lever up. And it's just a safety thing. I would rather be safe than sorry. Please get in the habit of doing that. We just here within the last year had a guy in Michigan killed for this exact thing. A guy turned around, the operator turned around in the cab to get something out of his lunch. His jacket pocket caught the excavator controls. And now that guy has to live with the fact that he killed his laborer. He has to live with that for the rest of his life. So please, 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 if you hear nothing else out of this video, please hear this. Put that safety bar up when you're not running the machine. So. That's it for today's video. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. I know this was kind of a quick overview. There's a lot of information to take in on this excavator, so feel free to ask away in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.